treated the middle section of the leg and now what we have to do is go over to the lathe and you can see we've tried several different designs. We tried a rounded like an onion bulb design which eh, we weren't too too keen on. So we finally settled in on uh, the mushroom cap and a nice gentle taper beneath it. So it gives it like a nice uh, uplifting delicate look at the bottom. And again, with this tenon here, the half inch tenon, that goes into the half inch hole in the bottom of the foot. And that allows us to complete this leg in three sections. It allows us to have this detail end nicely into that ring at the top of the foot. So any table that you're looking at, you're basically building a box. And with this, we've built this out of mahogany and pine. So if you want to take a look inside the table here, you see these three bits right here on the apron. They're the door, the drawer stops. So that's where the, we can get a nice flush fit on the front. These oak boards here are the runners that the drawer will slide in and out on. And what we've had to do with this, if you can get a shot in the back, you see where there's a mortise and a tenon on these on the back, back of the frame and the side of the frame. What that allows us to do is, ac is accommodate for wood movement. If we were to glue that piece up, sooner or later that would just break loose because of the tangential movement of wood. So we get that squared away, we've got our square box, then we turn to making the drawers to fit the box. And we've used, oh, this pine is probably 60 or 70 years old, and it's nice and straight grained, it stays nice and flat, it won't move around on us. On the back, you can see that we've made what's called a through dovetail. And these are all done by hand. You saw to a line, you chisel out, you fit it from the other side. In the front here, we have what's known as a half-blind dovetail. Again, we'll, we'll have these tails cut, or the pins, and then we'll mark that on this piece of mahogany, and then do handwork with chisels to get that to be nice and flush. It's a solid mahogany front with a flamed mahogany veneer attached to it. And to do that, what we make are some forms, like you see right here. It's just curved cuts that allow the wood to move with a piece of felt so we don't damage the wood. And then that gets clamped on the front so that there's constant pressure on every piece of the veneer so the veneer won't lift or bubble. So we get the one drawer done, we line it with felt, and you can see it's not a plywood bottom, it's a solid pine, sometimes we use poplar, and we just cut what's known as a small rabbit, which kind of gives us this little lip that we can run that into a groove on the side of the drawers. So if you look in the back, you can see that detail that I'm talking about. There's a small groove that runs the length of this side of the drawer, and then this part of the bottom of the drawer runs inside that slot. And then just one single screw, and then you can get the same with the wood movement. You don't glue this in, it's just dry fit and one screw to hold it together. And then we chamfer this back edge so it's not square, so that when you go to put the drawer in, you're not breaking the drawer or chipping the veneer. And then we get a nice flat fit on that. And I'm trying to think, we let, oh, so in making the top, this is also solid mahogany, but if we can turn this toward the camera, you can see that we've got a beautiful veneer pattern on the top of that. That's called crotch mahogany. And this occurs when you have the tree goes into a Y, or you've got a branch going this way and a branch going that way. That crotch is what gives you this cathedral effect on that board. So, if we tried to glue this top on, eventually the wood movement would cause it to pop. If we screwed it down tightly, it wouldn't allow for wood movement. So, underneath these turned buttons, these two are directly screwed into the legs. On the back, we've cut a slot in the top and put the screw in so that with that slot, the screw will hold the board tight but it will allow the board to move back and forth with the change in humidities and temperatures throughout the year. And that is pretty much all the detail with this.
Um, it looks like a small, simple piece, but I would say we've probably got somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 to 250 hours uh, start to finish in making this piece. Uh, the finish is done with several coats. Of, well, there's a sanding sealer, then we use shellac, and then on top of that, we use some glazing where you can see there's like there's some dark spots in and around these beads, a little bit of dark spot at the bottom. That's where the maid didn't clean the furniture too well. Shows a little bit of aging. So you don't want to have a piece that's an, a replica all shiny and brand new. You want to have a little bit of patina. You want to have a little bit of defect in there to make it look older. And that's about as much as I can think of right now for this table.